So I know a lot of you are wondering about the Audi R8 and well, here it is. And it said on the Carfax it had a bunch of engine work done, new timing chain, uh, the block replaced. And I actually called the shop and I asked them, did you do all this work and the car left running? And they first said they didn't want to disclose that information because it's private and they were reluctant. And then finally they said yes. And then the seller told me the car ran. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> I think I need to drive it. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And today is going to be exotic car day. We're going to focus on two mid-engine sports cars and one hopefully having good news here with my 1997 Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster and its new beautiful Capristo exhaust installed. Now, other than being really cool and looking really cool, well, that part doesn't really matter. Uh, it was making a horrible moaning noise every time I drove it. Ooh, some kind of exhaust resonance or leak or something that is hopefully solved with a mostly complete replaced exhaust which we shall tour in a little bit but after that and take this thing for a drive we're gonna check on the Audi R8 it's my wife's Christmas present it is now almost April and it still doesn't run and it may never ever run uh, we had shipped it down from the car wizards who was kind of stumped on things to an Audi specialist who had the right scan tools to really dive into the thing and unfortunately the news is probably real real bad so let's uh, start with good hopefully and get with the wizard and See what he's done. Oh, wizard. Oh, are you touching it again? Yes. Oh. Isn't it beautiful? It is so gorgeous, and it's all going to be covered up, unfortunately. But that is the Capristo exhaust. There's headers, there's test pipes, but uh, it wasn't the complete exhaust system, though. You had to recycle some exhaust parts. Right. There's four catalytic converters on this vehicle. Four? Two of them were reused, and also a collector. Pipe. Okay, well, hopefully it wasn't some of those pieces that was making the uh, hopefully noise. Hopefully not. But look at it. I mean, it's a 15 grand system, so it should look like sculpture, but mm -hmm. all this will be covered up by heat shields, and you'll never, ever see it again, but you'll certainly hear it. Oh, there's even more. Yeah, there's lots of breasts on that thing. Oh, yes. Wow. But the headers... They look fairly stock. One of them was leaking, which prompted all that to be replaced, but it probably wasn't making the noise. Uh, I see all the old bits over there. There was kind of a weird discovery actually with this car. Let's go look at it. Here's the ugly heat shield that covers all this up. It's where you'll never see the beautiful Capristo, but you sort of need that. Uh, the original headers, they have a little more heat insulation to them. Mm -hmm. You think I need that? Yeah, we could probably get some of those blankets or, some, or wrap them with some heat wrap. Right, the stock muffler tips. But then the surprise discovery was the tubey exhaust. It's not the stock exhaust in this right. thing, which it's hard to believe because it was absolutely silent before other than the oh, oh, it was just so quiet. It's amazing to me that this is a tubey exhaust and it sounded like a vacuum cleaner. I suppose. It's so quiet. I mean it may have been the catalytic converters, huh? Which possibly. Is this Is that Italian welds there? Surely not. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. It seems so rough. I'm having a hard time believing that actually, but Maybe it is. It is. But it still has catalytic converters, so it's still legal in all the states. Mm -hmm. The check engine light hopefully won't come on for other than it being an Italian car. Mm -hmm. So now we can hear it, huh? We can hear it roar. It didn't moan at idle, it just was pretty quiet. That's... See, that's not that different. A little noisier, but not that yeah. different. Sounds better, though. Yeah. I think I need to drive it. Yeah, I need to drive it for the full experience, so. You do. Um, the latches, latches are gone. We have to wizard fix it. We'll have to put some bungee cords to this frame piece right here so it doesn't flap around. That works. Lambo life. Well, wish us luck on this moon. Please, no moon. Please, yes, everything. Please. Definitely still there. 
Exhaust manifold leak. Yeah. You told me it was what was making the moaning noise, but it needed to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the exhaust, which at full throttle, it does sound great. But we now we've we've eliminated the exhaust. I don't think it's those catalytic converters that are still on there, right? No, I don't think so. It sounds like it's right behind the panel here. Right, which is what I always thought. But then when you add it up on the lift, then you're kind of hearing it from a different perspective, and you're thinking it may be exhaust resonance. I mean, it's just. You saw an issue, we fixed it. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not the moan. The moan will not leave. It will, it's a Mona Lisa. That's one way to put it. <laughs> it was supposed to be good news, bad news. I mean, this isn't, this isn't bad news. I'd say, well, it's bad that it's not fixed, but it's good that it, it's an exhaust that sounds really nice. But apparently the Audi, which you wisely punted, is, is the worst news. I hope it's, not too bad of news, but what you describe, it sounds it, horrendous. It, yeah. So I know a lot of you are wondering about the Audi R8, and well, here it is. Really, nothing has changed, although we do have a theory. Now, I popped this thing, and it said on the Carfax it had a bunch of engine work done, new timing chain, uh, the block replaced, and I actually called the shop, and I asked them, did you do all this work and the car left running? And they first said they didn't want to disclose that information because it's private and they were reluctant. And then finally they said yes. And then the seller told me the car ran. And so I bought it for $44,000 or whatever under that presumption. And it showed up not running. The wizard didn't know where to begin. He doesn't have the right experience or the scan tools to really dig into this thing. That's why I'm at Chad at Europros. This car was dropped off and you all, I know you expect things to happen fast on YouTube and that's just not the case in the real world because well, how far out are you on appointments right now? We're currently booking out until May 12th, about six weeks. Currently. Six weeks out, so that's why it's been sitting here. But you were kind enough to just plug it in for me and see the codes that we saw and you have a theory, right? Yes, so there were a couple of symptoms that rang out with a couple of things that we've seen previously on other vehicles. So there is one symptom specifically, uh, which is that after clearing fault codes, not trying to start it for a short period of time, when you go back to try to start it, it acts like it temporarily wants to start one quick hiccup and then it immediately quits again. This is correlated with a rise in fuel pressure um, that we're noticing in the fuel rail, which spikes and goes way over spec, which makes us believe that the fuel pump is out of time because the engine is actually out of time. So there was also the uh, crankshaft position sensor, which we replaced on a theory because it was reading so wacky. Correct we are not seeing any crank position signal coming in through the computer. Um, sometimes when these signals are getting too far out of spec, they will just go back to reading 0.0. .0. So maybe this car never left that shop running. And I wonder if they tried to do something really crazy, like take a normal V8 engine to a dead R8 and try and like cobble it together in some Frankenstein thing. I don't see how that would work though. We, we've, seen, we've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. It is really hard. To, it is really hard to start. Uh, just a lot of lot of presumptions, a lot of a lot of possibilities, a <laughs> lot of. So the reason they would do that is because the engine there's no used availability because they do kind of like to pop and it's a twenty two thousand dollar engine from Audi if you want to replace it, which I was not expecting that. Unfortunately, that's probably the reality I'm facing. So what you're gonna dig into it a little bit, right? So what we're gonna try and do next, we are going to get it into the shop. We're gonna take the valve covers off. We are going to line the engine up on top dead center, and we are going to be looking for timing marks on the top of the camshafts. There are flats on the top of the camshaft where a special tool bolts down to the top, and these all need to be perfectly horizontal, uh, parallel with one another. If any of these are tilted, we will know at that point that the engine is out of time, that we have a camshaft out of time. At that point, we'll also be looking to see if any of our rocker arms are loose. If those are loose, that'll let us know that the valve is still down in the cylinder and bent and that the cam has now released it and that the rocker is now just loose. 
so that's where I'm at with the Audi R8. It's uh, probably bad news. I imagine that you're right based on what I'm seeing on the Carfax and how it's acting, but there, there is a slim chance. And then I need to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do because, well, these things have gone up in value so much that like a salvage title one's $60,000, which is just absolutely ridiculous. So it may be worth fixing. That's the only good part about having this car for so long not working is they've gone up in value so much that it may be actually worth fixing now. Uh, but hunting down a used one is going to be hard. But but maybe you're wrong. I, I can I can hope that you're wrong. Maybe we, I don't know. If we go in there and we don't see the things I just spoke about, then we're gonna dig in a little bit deeper and see if there's something else. Okay. Yes, we we, we think we know what we're doing, but yeah, we're, we're, we get surprised. All well, it it literally does take advanced degrees to be a mechanic in these things nowadays, right? It does. Yes. Just yeah. one of my techs is a uh, he's got his master's in computer science. He's a an electrical engineer. So he's, he, he's a very, very smart guy that works on these with us, yes. So even, you know, dealers don't have guys like these. So you find a shop like this that is very qualified to work on these cars, it, it's a blessing, even though it takes a long time. We're just gonna have to be patient and hopefully, well, hopefully this Audi's running someday and my wife doesn't kill me. Because it was a Christmas present for her, yeah. Yeah. What a Christmas. Yeah, what a Christmas present. So, anyway, well, maybe there'll be some good news at the next stop. I'm gonna head over to uh, Van Gogh, pick up a car that's getting detailed. Hopefully, Things can't get blown up when they get detailed. Hopefully better news. Hopefully oh. better news. Yeah, they hopefully can't better. burn a car down with a detail. Yes, now, please, please, good news. I'm here at Van Gogh. I'm dropping off the 355 to get this one panel painted because we had all this painted because it was damaged on the bottom. The paint was peeling. But this yellow is a little bit off from the yellow here where it was painted before, so we're just going to get that to match. And they're not even charging me to do it, but I can drop this off and pick up the ML63, which hopefully looks a lot better after a detail. Stuart? Hey, how are you? What's going on? Not too much. How was your vacay? Oh, it's great. Uh, I need some good news. Today's been a I've little rough. For you. Well, so, uh, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Let me go show yeah. you. Yeah. I've got some. Are you, wait, giving me a Ferrari? Yeah. So the ML, we just decided that we needed another <laughs> red one. So. That's straight trade. Yeah. That's a nice 430. <laughs> yes. This yeah. one's in for paint correction and a full detail. So the guys are working hard on that. But here it is, yeah, so the, the $5,000 ML63 that is, well, we're far, far away from that after all the fixes and things, <laughs> right. but still, you know, under 10 into it and with the detail, yeah, came it's in a for, nice car. Yeah, quick detail, it shined up. We, we uh, kind of spruced up the headlights a little bit for you. Um, but, you know, no paint correction or anything, but just a nice good detail. It's been clay barred, waxed. Um, not the full Van Gogh. But not the, yeah, this is uh, not a, Paint correction, but just a full. Oh, the inside full was. This is dramatic. Yes. Wow. Okay. And the seats. Yeah, seats are all done. The, more panels. You have color again in the seats, yes. kind of. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And what's what's neat, Tyler, is if you will feel the leather, you know, like even here. Yeah. See how much softer it is. You get the dirt out of the grain of the leather, and it softens it back up for you. Very nice. So you get everything clean. Here, I can take well, this Was this off. for me? If I'm yeah. worried about my greasy mitts <laughs> yeah, here? <no. laughs> yeah, but even the steering wheel, feel the steering wheel. You know, it's funny when you get all that cleaned up. Yeah. It's amazing what it, you know. Well, and the uh, AMGs had the leather dash and a lot of other little special touches that are really popping now since uh, this thing's been detailed. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Stuart, I was going to sell this. It does not look like a $175,000 no no it wasn't i was going to just sell this thing because i have a lot of big bills and right uh, tax payments dues and i'm looking at it now yeah i, I, I don't yeah. well i don't really want to yeah so. i'm like ten thousand dollars into it oh, okay and it does still need some things like a little suspension bits i think a right. dip mount and he said was looking a little perished i okay. can feel that a little bit but otherwise right. it drives fine yeah i don't know when that looks the part does not look like it's got 175,000 miles on it to me. No, it doesn't. You're making Someone a good sales it. pitch, but uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, I'm ten thousand dollars into it. I suppose if I get nine grand for it, I'll let it go. Otherwise, it goes no reserve on cars and bids. I'll drive it for a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I'll think about it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it won't break down now. It, it will break down. It's like I'm, this is a terrible sales pitch right now. You say a nice thing, and then I say a terrible <laughs> thing. But thank you for the bit of good news here. Absolutely. It looks fantastic. Yeah. The Range Rover's in for service, so I can drive this thing around. So Yes. Anyway, it's it's not all bad. Obviously, I buy these hoopties and know all this bad stuff's going to happen, and then you all get videos out of it. It's it's fun. I'm in a great position where I can't lose, because if something goes wrong, then I get more videos out of it. You all enjoy yourselves. I make money in the AdSense and all that stuff. Uh, and if a car is good, then, well, it's good and I don't lose a bunch of money. So I'm in a nice position yeah. where... Good either way. I, I'm pretty good either way, but still... 
this has been a, an expensive few days. So appreciate y'all watching because I need it.